Welcome to the Gifts of God Explained. Today we will briefly discuss the life of Teresa Helena Higginson, the school teacher and mystic, and the sublime revelations revealed to her. Born in England in 1844, she was the third of seven children. The Higginsons were known to be an exemplary Catholic family and a role model for the entire neighborhood. Careful to train their children in the fear and love of God and a true love for the poor was always an integral part of the family's life. At a very young age, Teresa, overwhelmed by the majesty of God, fell prostrate on the ground and offered herself to Him forever. Later in her life, she discovered her life's vocation as an elementary school teacher and derived her greatest joy from teaching the poorest of God's children how to love Him. When she was not teaching, her time was spent in visiting the sick and her nights were spent in prayer. Her life's goal was to share in the passion of Christ and to do penance for sinners. She was accustomed to austere penances and had gladly emptied herself in taking upon herself the sins of others. All of this and more served to prepare her for mystical marriage, the highest union a soul can obtain with God on earth. Jesus had told her that because she had given herself so completely to him that he in turn would be all hers and glorify her in the sight of the angels and of the saints. And Teresa's spiritual director for many years was Father Canon Snow, who was very well known for being practical and not easily fooled. Upon his deathbed, he declared that Teresa Helena Higginson was not only a saint, but one of the greatest saints God had elevated in his church. Jesus frequently appeared to Teresa with the urgent desire that his sacred head receive special adoration as the seat of divine wisdom, the shrine of the powers of his most holy soul and intellectual faculties, and the center of the five senses of his adorable body. Jesus wishes now to be crowned and acknowledged as the wisdom of the Father, the true King of Kings. Our Lord stated that this devotion would sum up all the honor that is due to his sacred humanity, and that it is not only the fulfillment and completion of the sacred heart devotion, but the crowning and perfection of all devotions, the great devotion for the latter times. It is our Lord's most ardent desire that the Friday after the Feast of the Sacred Heart be honored as a festive day in honor of the Sacred Head, as the seat of divine wisdom, and that public adoration be offered to Him for all of the outrages and sins which are continually being committed against Him, and that special reparation and atonement be offered to Him on this day. Our Lord wishes us to offer to His Father His sacred head in all its splendor, but above all the sacred head of Jesus crowned with thorns for the remission of the sins of pride. This devotion is the great remedy to the sin of pride of intellect, apostasy, disbelief, and infidelity, the crying evils of our times. Our Lord also made known to Teresa that his soul is not known or loved, stating, My soul remains solitary and my thorn-crowned brow unhonored. And that although we will never know the extent to which our blessed Lord suffered in his sacred body, Jesus revealed to Teresa that it is only a drop in the ocean compared to what he suffered in his most sacred soul. Upon clarifying Jesus' desire to have his sacred head be honored as the shrine of the powers of his most holy soul, she related that as the reason or intellect in us is the part of the soul that is nearest to God, it is in a special manner the image of God, the very light of God in the soul, in which we see God as he is and ourselves as we are, capable of judging right from wrong that the soul pervades every part of the body, and as the reasoning powers are the highest faculty of the soul, the head is the shrine of these faculties. Jesus had made known to Teresa 
that although he was much offended by sins committed through the weakness of the will and misled affections, that the sins of pride of intellect far exceed these in number and magnitude. And by making reparation and adoring our Lord's most sacred head as the seat of divine wisdom, the more we see the workings of the Holy Spirit of God in the human soul, and the better we love and adore the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus revealed to Teresa that this would be the great devotion in the time to come, and that St. John referred to the Sacred Head as the seat of divine wisdom in the last two chapters of Revelations. And with this mark were sealed the numbers of his elect. Our Lord showed her the great blessings and graces he has in store for those who shall further his divine will to this end, and that anyone who shall assist in furthering this devotion shall be blessed a thousandfold, and that he will crown and clothe with a particular glory before the angels and men in the courts of heaven, those who clothed him in glory on earth, and would crown them with everlasting bliss. We render a great homage to the Blessed Trinity by adoring our dear Blessed Lord's sacred head as the seat of divine wisdom. Untold blessings are promised to those who shall try to further our Lord's wishes in spreading this devotion. Those who shall try by words or means to hinder or reject this devotion shall be as glass cast down. Teresa herself composed many beautiful prayers in honor and for the spread of the sacred head devotion, such as this one. O oh, infinite wisdom, boundless love, how unsearchable are your ways. Make known, O oh Lord, the desire to have thy sacred head honored as a seat of divine wisdom, and to have thy holy soul sorrowful unto death comforted. Arise and show that thou art the Almighty God, Make known the burning desire of your sacred heart. Make haste, O Lord, for thy own dear sake. Do not delay, I beg thee, through thy most precious blood and for thy bitter passion's sake. I ask thee, O ever-blessed Trinity, in the holy name of Jesus, in honor of the same seat of divine wisdom and through the burning love of his sacred heart. I ask thee in the name of Mary and Joseph and for the salvation of souls, that thou wilt make known and spread this devotion. Speak, Lord, and say what thou wilt have us do. We now await the Church's final approval regarding this private revelation, which is free from all doctrinal error. We note that although Catholics are not bound by private revelation, they do serve to strengthen us and to bring us to a deeper union with God.